podcast. Yay. Woo. 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 It's... <laughs> you know, if the anime reflux episodes came out at the same time as the podcast instead of like eight months difference, uh, that would have been like almost like a thing because you did the same thing for the anime reflux intro. <laughs> I do that for most things we record. It's just straight up a reflex at this point. Oh, okay. That makes, I I didn't notice until you did it back to back on this. So, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. Podcast. So, uh, hmm? so let's go ahead and get this out of the way. We're going to be spending the first hour and a half or so talking about the Nintendo Direct, right? <laughs> I <laughs> I've been holding it back. Oh boy! Uh, on uh, <laughs> was Professor Layton's direct. coming back. Yeah, that's the thing I'm excited about. So you know, um, I'm really excited about the Bat and Kaitos duology being remastered. Is that the yeah, one with the really the... shitty voice acting in the originals? <laughs> In the Eternal Wings of the Lost Ocean, yes. I don't think that there were any such problems with Baton Kaito's Origins. The okay. voice acting there was solid, I think. Um, yeah, that that's a super cool thing that Baton Kaito's is actually getting something because, you know, Monolith Soft uh, made that. Um, and... There was also the Metroid Prime Remaster. I still need to go play that. <laughs> I might... I've never played a Metroid game in my life. I might have to make that one my first, maybe. Maybe go with Dread. Yeah, that, that is more... That is closer to form for the series as a whole, isn't it? Yeah. It, it's, it's weird to call the Prime series a bit of an outlier of... Outlier... For the Metroid series, but it kind of is. A lot of them are 2D side scroller. Well, Metroidvania, I guess you could call it. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. And um, I just haven't gotten time to play it because I still haven't finished Fire Emblem because they announced DLC and th- there were more maps and then mm-hmm. I got distracted. Um, because they added my boy Soren to uh, Fire Emblem Engage. I don't know who that is. From uh, from Ike's game. Mm. Ike <laughs> Ike from Super Smash Brothers. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's not even wrong. It's not even wrong. That's how people I'm one. Of, I'm probably one of the only people who, when I saw Ike announced for Brawl, I freaked out. Mm. I'm like, nobody else gets this. Um. Yeah, and, it, it's 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 like how in that one direct they announced Banjo Kazooie and the Dragon Quest hero in the same one because hey, here's something for Westerners and here's something for Japanese. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, Just like an audience that don't get it and don't care, so let's not do that again. <laughs> and um, yeah, Pikmin Four. They showed a bit of that and. You have a dog, <laughs> and the oh, dog. Gee, which... so go ahead, go ahead. The dog you can. Good. Okay, that was a bad time to cut off because that was <laughs> a dog you can what zero. Yeah, you can ride on. Like, okay. Uh, okay. Wait, what do you mean you, by ride on? You throw your, <laughs> like the Pokemon. No, okay. you throw the. <laughs> 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 but um, it, it it can help you get across water, which is like they have ice Pikmin here too, which can freeze water. Yay! That's a really big deal for Pikmin fans. Oh yes. the The whole inclusion of this dog character, which is apparently named Ochi. First of all, that's a pretty blatant reference to Poochie from those. I think it was a Yoshi game. Yoshi Island Ooh. Games. Yeah. But in any case, this is the first time that they're introducing a non-hostile creature on the planet other than the Pikmin. A creature that's actually intended to be helpful 
to you without being antagonistic or neutral. Neutral being the the nectar carrying creatures. Anyway. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you have this you can make him crash through obstacles, carry back treasures and corpses, or surf on him, swim on him, and also apparently good at finding buried treasures. On the note of which, they're bringing back the cave system from Pikmin 2, which I'm looking forward to that. It was probably the best part of Pikmin 2. Yeah, bring back the dungeons. Because that's what they are. (laughs) On the ice Pikmin, I'm not sure if they're like purple Pikmin, where you toss enough of them onto something and it freezes, or like white Pikmin, where they freeze someone solid if that someone eats them. I think it's white. um, Because I looked through the trailer and I saw one die and then ice. Well, yes, but a bunch of others were being thrown onto its back Mm. at the same time, so I was just unsure. Maybe it's both. Yeah, could be. Could be a case Uh, of uh, their accommodating patients never lose a Pikmin uh, (laughs) kind of gameplay style where, like, yeah, you can have it get eaten and it'll freeze the thing solid for you, or you can put, like, a dozen of them on its back and it'll do the same thing. and It'll work either way. That'd be lovely. I'm that. I like that kind of varied play style. Options are always good. Hmm. Everyone likes a non-lethal playthrough. That's always a nice thing to have. Yes. There's also, it looks like you can play at night in Pikmin 4, which that's, is a yeah, that's big been, deal. That's been teased, and it's pretty, much, it's pretty much stated that it's going to be some sort of, if not... If not just a challenge mode, then it's going to be super hard in any case. The glowing red eyes of Doom are kind of a solid indication of that. Yeah, the whole thing with Pikmin is you can't be out at night. If you're out at night, you're going to die. Because all the nocturnal predators wake up and infest the whole planet. Mm Mm-hmm. Here's That's the why twist. You... It's a crossover with Pokemon Legends, and it's the Hungry Ursa Ring. It's it's coming for you. <laughs> that I would... hate that I would not hate if that happened. <laughs> that would be terrifying because of how small your character is. <laughs> um, also, uh, one thing that was really nice, and I hope they continue to add on with more stuff is Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games are on Nintendo Switch Online. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, uh, yes. I've been playing those a fair amount the past couple of days. I tried the original WarioWare. Forgive me for stating the blatantly obvious, but it's kind of basic compared to the other WarioWare games. Oh, of course. I mean, yeah, Obviously, it's, it's basic. It's where everything else came from. But it's I... nice that they. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, it's nice they had a solid concept and they've just built on it from there. It's nice to see how strong an idea it was, even at the start. Mm. At some point, I need to start Minish Cap. That's high on my need to play list at the moment. I played that one. It was decent uh, I when I played I have, it back actually. in the day. Until it crashed on the third boss, and I just. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, Sorry about that. Yeah, it happens. Um, I clearly wasn't enjoying it very much if, you know, I stopped playing the second it crashed. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say, I was joking when I said the Pokemon trading card game would go on the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> but it's there now. I it's guess. Coming, actually. <laughs> um, if I... <laughs> It's a short list of Game Boy or Game Boy Color games, aside from Pokemon games, and I'm fully expecting that to be announced in five days. There's going to be something on the 24th, I'm sure. Oh, there is a a new Pokemon 
funnily enough, there is a new Pokemon trading card game online thing that they're doing currently. It's on beta on PC. I haven't installed, actually, but I haven't. They have some really shitty security stuff to deal with, and I just got bored with trying to figure it out. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're uh, probably going to do something with that on Switch, I would assume. That's going to be a thing. Mm hmm. Should be interesting. Could be. Just... You know, the last time they did it, it wasn't very good. So. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy that I got Super Mario Land 2, the six golden coins. That that thing is, like, not a lot of people played that game, but for the people who did, it's when you see that and you hear the music, it's just unlocking a memory. Uh, I see Super Mario feeling. Land 2. To Mario Land 2, yes. Oh shit, that was my first video game call. <laughs> Memory unlocked. Um, and uh, that's that's great that that's on there. Um, Longs Awakening, uh, Longs Awakening <laughs> DX, um, uh, Metroid 2, Warrior Land 3, um, Kirby's Dream Land, uh, Gargoyles Quest, like a bunch of good stuff with. I'm really excited for them to get Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons on there, along yeah. with uh, obviously Pokemon Trading Card Game and Kirby Tilt and Tumble. Yeah. And Ron <laughs> loves Pokemon Trading Card Game. It's a um, rap. <laughs> but it's nice that they kind of packaged the Game Boy and Game Boy Colors into like just one category. Yeah. And like, you can they, they are very filters. small games. It would it would be kind of egregious if they put that in the expansion stuff. Yeah, and you can put on the filters to just switch things to Game Boy Color, mm. uh, which is really nice. Um, and you know, I looked into it, and they have been doing a lot of work with updating their like N sixty four emulator and everything. So, like to the point where it's actually somewhat better um, mm. than the original in some regards. Um, wow. and okay. like they fixed things that were broken in the original games, um, which is kind of interesting mm. and like broken textures and stuff. And I look forward to seeing, um, you know, what more they add here, the Game Boy Color games, you have, you know, Minish Cap, which is a really good game. Um, and you know, a bunch, they got, uh, Kuru Kuru Kuruden, um, which is. A game where you like have this bar yeah. that you have to maneuver to get I, through these tight spaces. I watched that just like the ten seconds of gameplay of that, and I got anxiety just watching I, it. <laughs> like, I watched mm. a, a friend play it uh, a couple months ago, <laughs> like on emulator. That game has not come to the West before. I remember um, that. I I never played the game before myself, obviously, but I remember the assist trophy from. I think the fourth Super Smash Brothers was where it showed up and just mm. saw that it was Japan only. Looking at the actual gameplay of it, I'm not sure what to think. I mean, yes, I feel anxious watching that thing turning constantly <laughs> and trying to maneuver it around. But at the same time, it's something of a puzzle, and I love puzzle games. Yeah, it's a puzzle. And um... it's, it's a puzzle along the lines of... You know those uh, maze games where where it's just a cursor maze where you have to carefully maneuver the mouse around the track mm -hmm. and not deviate? It's that, only you don't quite know where the track is. <laughs> um, also, uh, really good that we're getting um, like Metroid Fusion, Amazing Mirror, Golden Sun, Fire Emblem, you know? Um, F Zero Maximum. We're getting a lot of good Game Boy Advance games. That's for the like expansion pass thing, which is starting to become more and more worth it over time. Yeah, it would be cool if they put the Sonic Advance games on there because a lot of people didn't play those, so that'd be kind of neat. that would be amazing because I love the Sonic Advance games. Yeah, I don't think I ever played those actually. Hmm. I'm s <laughs> I haven't either. I, I like this idea of just keeping a huge library of games that you can just, you know, access like that. Absolutely. Uh, I would like to see... I mean, the, the, the dream is to see the GameCube games start to pop up in there. 
but I, yeah, I mean, definitely, but probably not anytime soon. Yeah, no, not anytime soon. GameCube emulation is spotty. I mean, speaking for me personally, I'll be content if they spend another another year or so focusing on just Nintendo 64 and the two uh, Game Boy systems because there's a big library of a lot of good games that they haven't released yet there. Yeah, whatever new Switch they come out with, the idea would be that since this is tied to your account, you could probably just carry this forward. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. The one, the one thing I would say to that is GameCube games are actually a little harder to, uh, yeah, actually get hold of. It's it's the Wii U problem. It's like it's it's weird enough kilter, and no one's really. There's not enough there for people to go out of their way to do decent emulation for it a lot of the time, and it's really uh, hard to do. So, it would be really nice if there was official support so those games don't get lost in the lurch. Kind of yeah, Agreed. I mean, not uh, everyone can just go to a retro game shop and find the original console and get all the games and such there. It's you'd have to be really hardcore to go for something like that. I think I did I mean, that for the Dreamcast yeah. back in the day. That was you need you need to be able to have a TV that can support it. You know. Yep, that is getting increasingly rare. Yes. And, um it's the emulation with GameCube in particular is just really hard because of how they decided to make that system. Um, and I would just appreciate it if they were to, you know, they made the system. You, you guys can figure it out. I know. I believe in you. You're doing yeah, <laughs> good the, work the, here. The GameCube didn't come out in the days where it was expected that you just kind of forget all of the stuff that you made. Like, it wasn't a one-and-done kind of thing anymore at that point. Like, GameCube was the point where things were starting to get to the point of, hey, maybe we should keep things together just in case we can sell this again. Like, that was already starting to be a thing. So, they probably have some stuff... It might be a case that they're having exactly as much trouble as everyone else is, <laughs> despite yeah, owning it. Because on the GameCube, you know, you got a lot of games that are, are, you know, have been big. Whether it's like Twilight Princess, Wind Waker, Smash Brothers Melee, uh, Mario Kart Double Dash, uh, I, I would Pokemon argue Coliseum. Twilight Princess was big because of the Wii, but okay. Uh, I played it on the GameCube originally. Good for uh, you. Yeah. Everyone else played it on the Wii. <laughs> But, no, I know a fair number of people have played on the GameCube too. It was more really? split than hmm. yeah. yeah, it was uh it was more split than the Wii U and the Switch with was <laughs> with Breath of the Wild. Hmm. Yeah. To the point hmm. that people forget that it came out on the Wii U. I didn't really I, didn't I mean know that. I just learned that now. Yep. Yeah. Um and uh I would just, you know, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, uh now Kirby that's... Air Ride. Yeah. Thousand Year Door is probably the one of the games that people are going to want the most. I mean, with how the Paper Mario series has changed since then, people, even people who have never played it, like me, would be cheering if they announced Thousand Year Door either as a starting game for Nintendo GameCube Online or as a re-release for the Switch. I don't think anyone would be upset if they did that. Yeah. That does seem uh, to be a thing that they're going for for their really big marquee titles of the past. Like, you know, Metroid Prime is getting a full-on re-release remaster instead of just, you know, getting Nintendo 64 emulation like everything else. And something, this is my own personal want, uh, Fire Emblem Path of Radiance is one of the hardest games to get a hold of. Um, it is, it's never been remade or re-released outside of GameCube. Um, it is hundreds of dollars if you want to try to buy um, a copy off somebody. It's one of those, huh? The emulation for it is also just busted. Mm. So you have to really fight through it to actually play it. 
and that's the game that Ike's from. And you know, we like Ike. They put him on all their advertising and in all their games and stuff. But you can't actually play his original game. The older Fire Emblems that are like you know sprite based are much easier, and um, there have been remakes, but like they are remaking them at a snail's pace. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's unfortunate because anybody who you know found Ike through Smash and wanted to go play that original game, you can't. You straight up just can't. I, I don't. I don't think anyone's that in love with Ike, but okay. <laughs> there are people. There are plenty of people. I, I, I actually, you know, I've known people who um, I, tr- I want, like, try emulating the game, and then they usually come back to me and be like, yeah, no, it kept crashing, or I just couldn't get through it. I mean, even so. just people who love Smash and want to try all of the characters' games, like, you'd run yeah. into a hard roadblock with that one. Man. That is a concept i never even considered but that is actually at this point it gets to be a case of that is a good way to look at doing like video game history yeah quite frankly smash is the only reason that i got into the zelda series and also the only reason i got into the persona series also a main reason why I bought Banjo Kazooie, and this was before it was part of NSO. It yeah, is bro- good. For... Hmm? Go ahead. I was gonna say my brother's actually like that, where he goes through to the uh, and goes back and plays the games of all the characters he likes. Hmm. It is rather delightful how you can just find new games to appreciate through this massive crossover. Yeah cool anyway but, uh, so we, we got a whole topic there uh there was some other stuff they announced in the direct um <clears throat> splatoon 3 is getting an expansion pass that has um inkopolis you can go back to the hub from the first game which is cool i don't know what all is there whether or not there's going to be like different stuff in the shops there but you can if you decide that you want it to go seemed... back to classic and have the Squid Sisters there, you can do that. According to what the trailer said, I think it's pretty much just aesthetic. Like, mm-hmm. you can get the same services regardless of which plaza you're going to, so it's just uh, just a blast from the past to enjoy some of the nostalgia from the old days. Oh, that, God, uh, I feel old. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I have never played Splatoon. I've never owned Splatoon. My only I experience have. with it is Smash Brothers and Let's Players, especially Chugga Con, right? Splatoon I... One came out eight years ago. I remember That's meaning on bad. this podcast about being a kid and or a squid. Now, yeah, yeah we're we're old, man. Uh... We've been doing this podcast for like a decade. Um. <laughs> And um, the other DLC is the story stuff uh, called Side Order, which is, you know, a re- both a pun and a reference to the last Splatfest of Splatoon 2, which was Chaos versus Order. Um, Chaos won, and that kind of was the theme of going out into the Splatlands and everything and now you have D- the dlc is going to be order and it's like dead coral everything's white very like near vibes they canonically um, worked in the last Splatfest. yes they that's do they really, did that, they did that really with cool. two as well the, oh, um, i'm not i'm not sure what to make of it myself but the thing that stood out most to me in that very ambiguous trailer was the very end where you had that school of fish swimming by the octoling implying that this is the bottom of the ocean um there's some implications in those quick cuts including the fact that like you see a bunch of um octolings on like a conveyor belt as if they're being mass produced and okay um pearl and marina from splatoon 2 are going to be prominent characters in that that are showing up and it looks like it's your same octoling from the splatoon 2 dlc that you're playing as so that's interesting. Um, 
by the way, uh, Splatoon One's final um, Splatfest was Callie versus Marie. Uh, Marie won, and that's why she was your main helper character in Splatoon Two. Oh, okay. Hmm. So the final Splatfest um, usually determines um, something about the next game. I'm fully into that. That's great. That is pretty entertaining. That's it's nice to have fan involvement like that to just be able to shape a bit of the future. That's very fun. Mm hmm. Um, aside from that, uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland is, you know, being ported still, and they are adding a new epilogue where you play as uh, Magalore. And uh, you get to do like a four player co op thing where you just. It's a Kirby game, but you're not using copy powers. You're just kind of upgrading, you know, your abilities. Uh, I, I like upgrades. And, yeah, through like defeating enemies and, and doing other things. So that's interesting, uh, getting back your full power. By the way, um, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 showed um, a trailer. Mm hmm. Uh, for their, uh, I mean, they're, they're doing like a roguelike thing that that's out now with a new character. I haven't touched that, but the the story trailer for their last wave of DLC um, is big spoilers. <laughs> oh, hmm. I don't know. I don't know anything about Xenoblade two or three, but I know everything about Xenoblade one and. Yeah, there are some gargantuan spoilers there, and I am very curious as to what exactly is going to happen. Um, it's if you've played one and two, um, then I think you're good because that's mainly what it's spoiling. Um, but yeah <laughs> um i'm really excited for that story there's a lot to, that's going on in that like 30 second clip they showed us i um, still need i still need to play two and three hmm. and one for that matter i haven't played it i've just watched a let's play of it chug let's series. play of it which is as in-depth as it gets but still it's a good series a uh, very yep. good story and yeah all i all i know from the spoilers that I didn't really see or understand or comprehend in any way, but apparently people are saying the protagonist of two got older and is a Chad now or something to that effect. Yeah. Like every anime protagonist ever. Um, yeah, but he was also very lame in two and everyone hated him. So <laughs> they, oh. they, he has a beard now. He, something uh, they they did a, a, some work to try to to, to fix uh, Rex <laughs> in three um, though uh, that character doesn't really show up um, like in the story um, they did some stuff to make it better because hmm. uh, people really didn't like Rex um, I got that impression <laughs> But I, I think that the the path that they took him, uh, you know, it works. I want to play those games, and I'm never gonna. <laughs> the yeah, they, play games. Hmm. Yeah. They are they are big games. Like that's part of why they're so enticing to me. <clears throat> I mean, I get that. Sometimes you just want to just want to sink into a game you're going to spend 100 hours on. Mm. Honestly, uh, I just want to play the game with Pyra in it because she seems pretty cool. She is <laughs> cool. And hot, I guess, technically, because Pyra, she's fire. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, you know, uh, they, ha they made a definitive edition of one, which adds a lot and makes the graphics not look like they're melting. Which is nice. That's important. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> um, what well, does change the art style a bit? Um, the faces aren't melting. So. 
appreciated. Uh, there was also, uh, I know people are going, so I know I have friends who are going nuts over Octopath uh, 2 demo, which is out. Um, I still, I'm going to have a hard time getting into Octopath because uh, my problem with the first one was you had eight different stories and you had a party that barely talked to each other or interacted mm -hmm. during those stories. Um, so, mm, I don't Did know. they not fix that problem? or um, They've taken steps, but I don't know if they've actually fixed it. Mm. So, we'll see. I haven't even touched the demo, so I can't say for certain. Mm. Um <clears throat> Bayonetta Origins got a new trailer. Apparently, you control a big demon to go attack things. I, I still haven't played Bayo 3, so I don't know what the deal is. Well, the character you're playing. Mm. You're good. The game's been out long enough, and if I was going to play it, I would have played it by now. I just, I just can't bring myself to pick it up. Okay. <sighs> So, you know what? <laughs> it's actually not worth talking about. <laughs> like, no, that's I could, fair. I could go into exacting detail on how fucking stupid it is. I'm not gonna, because it's not worth it. So, you know. <laughs> okay. It It is the game that they put all of the effort into instead of Bayonetta 3. So that might mean it might be good, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be happy about it. <laughs> so, you know. And now for something completely different, if we'd like to move away from this topic. Um, so, oh, uh, I was in call with somebody and the second they showed that there was going to be an Etrian Odyssey Origins collection, yeah, they started crying. Oh, okay, that's a little strong, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I, I was crying when new Pokemon Snap was announced. Yeah, that's fair. So that one's fair. Etrian Odyssey is like, it, okay, it, it's very cool, but come on. That's that's a, that's cool that they. That they're bringing that over. Um, there's a weird, like, Tron game. I don't understand. The, the yeah, striking while the iron's frozen. It's still a cool aesthetic to work with, so fuck it, why not? Um, and then a lot of people that I saw were rather excited about that game Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Yeah. Okay. That's, 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 a, that's a niche title that people liked a lot, yes. Um... <laughs> From my understanding, is Ghost Trick is a game that's extremely hard to recommend because they can't talk about it. Oh, it's one of those. Yeah, any that's... detail you give would immediately spoil it. Yes. Mm. Fun. All I know that's is that rough. you are a. From the trailer alone, you are a detective who dies and has to solve their own death, sort of thing. You know. All right, not that... a new concept, but a fun one. You know that conceit from. Uh, one of David Cage's shitty games where you were I forgot what the fucking name was of the game uh, uh, of the, Beyond the, Two Human the, be, Beyond Two Souls that's, that's, that's why that's I keep forgetting the name because I always want to say Two Human and it's not uh, <laughs> Beyond Two Souls where the, you've got a ghost buddy and you can send him to fuck with stuff like a poltergeist. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you have a stand. Yeah, that's what Ghost Trick is. That's the gameplay conceit of Ghost Trick. Is you do that, then it is a puzzle game of sorts. Is my understanding. Just shitty JoJo at that point. <laughs> and then there was the DLC for. Dead Cells? I haven't played that one. Ooh, Castlevania. That's a, one. that's a fun one. It's fine. Um, ha having played yeah, it recently, it, 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 it is fine. It, it is an acceptable game of roguelike variety. Well, roguelite technically variety. It is fine. I enjoyed uh, my time. I played it back when it came out, so if they yeah. made it worse since then, no, I haven't played it. 
they I enjoyed added a bunch of DLC to add new zones and stuff, and that's what this Castlevania is going to be. It's going to be like two new levels or something. Oh, gotcha. Um, one last thing I want to talk about um, regarding this um, is the um, I'm really excited for uh, Rain Code, which is the it's a game that the Danganronpa creators are making. Mm-hmm. Um, where you are base it's it's another detective game, uh, but you have this um Shiniga- spirit named Shinigami who haunts you and you have to go and um you know solve mysteries and crime and um it has all the style and flair of a Danganronpa game, but with a high budget and not just you know the 2d pop-up art like it's not a a visual novel in that way so i'm really excited about that it does look interesting i mean most of these excuse me all most of these mystery detective games look pretty interesting this this is coming from the guys who decided that they would make um debates a playable section where you have to shoot truth bullets through contradictions <laughs> so you know it looks like there's some like insane dimension you you go into to like do battle with lies mm. and stuff like that which <laughs> i i just appreciate their style that does sound like fun I just have to hope that it doesn't have a uh, an unpleasant ending. Mm. Well, I can, my... I can Sorry. tell you this much. Um, the Danganronpa series usually is, like, the entire premise of it is hope versus despair, and hope wins. So, you know. Fair enough. So is that all the Nintendo stuff that we... All the stuff worth talking about for now. Cool. Got it out the way. Yeah. Well, you say that 40 minutes in, but, you know. <laughs> it's half well, that's a patient half estimate, the... so. Yeah. <laughs> so, who's going go. first? Patient, do you want to go first? Sure. Yeah. Don't have much. Don't have much to talk about. I've been pretty. I've been pretty off this past week. It was just oh. problems that I had last week. <sighs> Every other week at church, there's a uh, there's a committee that makes uh, a meal or a snack for the rest of the ward, and I'm part of the group responsible for that. And last week, the meal in question was pie. So I decided that I wanted to do something interesting. So I gather all of these ingredients, and on Sunday I get up and I decide to start trying for the first time a recipe for Toriel's Butterscotch Cinnamon Pie. Hmm. That sounds delicious. Yes. I should have tried a test batch or two first. Because not only did it take long enough that I missed all of my church meeting before I got there, just in time to serve it to everyone else, but it came out a bit overcooked or undercooked. I mean, it was still good, but the butterscotch aspect of it was pretty much non-existent. That is a bit of a shame. Yeah. Tasted more like oatmeal in a pie, which, not bad, but not what I was going for. Yeah. That's a shame. Yeah. It's something that I'm going to need to try out again properly at some point in the near future. I love making things from scratch because they are always better that way. But it never turns out perfectly the first time. Yeah, well, it's, it always turns out better when you gain a little experience. It's not going to be better the first time, that's for sure. Definitely not. So, yeah. And 
just about threw my whole week off from there, and I'm I'm better now that I've finally gotten the proper uh, properly attended church again. It's quite refreshing for me. That's good. Yeah. Aside from that, though, not much has been going on. Just more work stuff and enjoying the fruits of the Nintendo Direct, mostly. Uh, mostly I've just played the uh, WarioWare game. I'll be f- focusing again on the on Minish Cap at some point, but I've sort of gotten back on a kick for Dr. Mario thanks to the Dr. Wario game that was hidden inside uh, the WarioWare game. So, <laughs> I didn't even know about that. that. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> yeah, That's they cool. have a lot of... They have a lot of classic arcade games just score X amount in this mode and unlock something great. And some of them are one player, some of them are two player. So it's it's pretty interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Anything else noteworthy? Lots of working on helping with stories and <clears throat> potential for good ones. Uh, Hornet has published the start of a crossover fic that he has been working on for a long while. The rough draft of the first the first huge part of the story is complete. It is oh, a good. it is a one piece Ruby crossover in which Team Ruby winds up, thanks to a uh, strange meteorite, they wind up uh, crossing through a portal that leaves them stranded on Little Garden. Hmm. All right. I'm always down for a weird crossover. I should also note it's a, it's something of a flashback crossover. The story opens with... I mean, I'm not at all familiar with Ruby, so forgive me for not knowing much of the terminology, but it starts with a bunch of troops who have been going around these portals trying to find a way to retrieve Team Ruby, and then Team Ruby emerges from the portal, having grown exponentially stronger over the ten months since they've gone missing, and Not they just... really a huge media res, but alright. At least they give us definite time frame of, like, this is how long the crossover part is going to last. So, yeah, like that. Yeah. So then it's just they retire back to the camp after Team Ruby has dealt with a large horde of Grim, showing off what is pretty strongly implied, if not certainly, the power of the dark, dark fruit. Okay. Bold choice. <clears throat> Quite. I have no idea where this is going. Zom read over the entire rough draft before Hornet started posting it, because unlike me, he has seen both Ruby and One Piece, so he could offer criticism on both. <laughs> oh, Zom's watched One Piece? I didn't know that. Sorry? <laughs> Sorry, never mind. It's a joke that apparently uh. got lost in translation. No, it got lost because I didn't hear the first yeah, part of that, it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Speaking. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Right. It is It is funny. But yeah, so... I don't know where this is going. He's planning to update the story every two weeks. Uh, while he's... Like I said, he's got the rough draft fully written up to the point where the ten months are up according to what I know. So, he's just working on revising each part before he posts it. So, it, you can count on the story going for a long while. So, I'm looking forward to that. Also, Boy with a Scar should be updating again soon. That'll be good. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Story stuff, work stuff, church stuff... Game stuff. Pie. <laughs> yes, and baking stuff. Pie day is coming up. I'll try again then. Yes. 
Oh yeah, that's next month. Yeah. Hmm. Of course, before that is Pokemon Day, and I'm very much looking forward to that. We'll probably be talking about that on the next podcast. When's Pokemon Day? The 24th. Oh, okay. Five days. Cool. Yeah, they're probably going to show off some stuff. I will be elated if they confirm my suspicions that they are going to be bringing Gens 1 through 3 to NSO. Now that they've uh, announced Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games. I would be elated if they just give me Pokemon Home already for Scarlet and Violet. <laughs> That's all I'm asking. <laughs> is that an unreasonable ask? I don't actually know what Pokemon Home is. Home is Pokemon the service Home. where you can transfer Pokemon from any game that is compatible with it to other games. And to oh. itself, like it, 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 it is basically the PC, but for all Pokemon games. So I can take my Pokemon from Legends Arceus and uh, Sword and Shield and bring them over. Nintendo doing a quality of life upgrade. Game Freak doing a quality of life upgrade. Get fucked. It's the mm-hmm. Pokemon Company. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, um, they kind they... of had had to at some point in the like. They. I feel like they really regret the gotta catch them all marketing spin that they did for the West <laughs> at this point. Because that's still I... the expectation that you can continue to do that. <laughs> Let me bring over my shiny Arceus, gosh darn it. Why do you have a shiny god? Because. I mean, I feel like they're supposed to be shiny, but you know. Of all the gods that exist, mine is the best one. Mine's shiny. It's yellow, which means it looks like a banana. It's the banana lord. I feel like if it's got to be either shiny or Morgan Freeman, like one of the two. Otherwise, like <laughs> hmm, I don't know. I mean, we'll never be able to tell unless it opens its mouth. It's... Hmm. Okay, so. <laughs> Sorry. I need a Morgan Freeman dub of all of Arceus's lines from Legends of Arceus. It would be very, it's... apparently it would be very easy now with that AI bullshit. <laughs> Fair. Isn't Arceus supposed to be, what's what's that word, androgynous? I mean, it can probably just change its voice to whatever it wants. Yeah, it's God. True. <laughs> Point uh, conceded. I, believe, I think gender fluid would be the right term. Maybe. Yeah. Or a, Does it have a gender? gender? I think it's genderless, isn't it? A gen- yeah. It's a gender. Um. Yeah. So it can sound however it fucking wants. It doesn't like. Yeah. They said Pokemon Home support was coming, um, like soon. And there's a really big um, update coming for Scarlet and Violet, like end of this month. So. Did the just... announcement reek of fear and desperation? Please don't um, burn our offices. It's coming soon. They <laughs> apparently this is a. I think some patch notes were um, shared out, and one of the big one thing that stood out to me. I, I didn't go through all of it, but one thing that stood out to me was, you know, the pokeballs that are sitting as like tr- cutscene triggers. And just clipping through the floor that they just placed hazard like haphazardly everywhere. Um, they're getting rid of those finally. They're gonna hide them. That's good. It's gonna make the game um, less looking like it was in beta. <laughs> I okay, I can see how that would be uh, distracting to have a triple A game and there's just blatant clipping it's blatant like hey this door that leads outside there's a pokeball floating above the door exit because that's the trigger that means that you're supposed to go through a scene transition and it's right there oh yeah it's right that's there <laughs> hopefully after this hopefully people will be less rabid for the release of a new Pokemon generation or a new Pokemon game because while Scarlet and Violet are some of the best games yet as far as gameplay 
They were released woefully unfinished. I'd rather wait an extra year for something cohesive. The issue isn't even people. The issue is, you know, the issue is the Pokemon company makes deadlines years in advance with like merch and movies and everything else. And they have to basically just grind their devs into like, you're doing, you got this amount of time, do it. And, um, I mean, Pokemon's one of the most, it's like the wealthiest franchise in the world, and they're not giving enough money to their developers and resources and enough time, even. So, hmm. but as long as it sells, they're not going to stop. Yeah, unfortunately. Anyway, unfortunately. To, to move things along, because, you know, we're at, you know, 50 minutes and we have three people to go. Uh, yes, my apologies. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm very much finished. Uh, zero. I saw Ant Man and the Lost Quantumania. Is it any good? I've heard it was lazy as shit. Uh, I did. I went in with zero expectations and I enjoyed it. No, that's fair. All right. Why did you think you were in it? <laughs> <laughs> I was. Uh, you know, I was, I was just projecting. <laughs> but um, the. Uh, there's, there's there's some humor that works in it and that I found pretty funny. I saw some people getting upset about Modoc and I'm like, really? This is the hill you're gonna choose to die on? Is the that the Modoc hill? You didn't they didn't portray Modoc like in the comics? Wasn't uh, Modoc the one that was just kind of a face or something? He's a face he's with like, like little baby arms and legs in a chair and he screams at people. Hmm. Yeah, he had like the HBO show or something. I forget what it was. But yeah. You know, it's like this. It's it's Modoc. It's one of the stupidest characters in comics. So, you know, he's ninety he percent head. He's reverse Midna. You can get all angry gamer mode all you want, but just, just, just don't. Um, angry gamer is a weird way to phrase that when it's comics and films. But all right, yeah, angry comic fan, like yeah, it's angry not nerd, of, whatever. Yeah, angry nerd, yeah. Um, I liked the the visuals and the um the whole quantum realm that they were doing. I thought that was just kind of a cool setting. We don't really get to see much of it. I feel like the pacing in the movie is off. Um, but I don't know. I I enjoyed it. I thought it was visually interesting. There was comedy. There was some uh good character moments. Um, it's an Ant-Man movie. <laughs> so everything that you would expect from an Ant-Man movie is is mostly there with the exception of uh, um, the his criminal friends don't show up in the movie at all. So there's, what was his name? Luis? Yeah, the Luis doesn't that, show up at yeah. all. That's a shame. It foc- focuses more on the on his sort of family that he's got together with you know his daughter and Hope and Hank Pym and uh, you oh, know. cool! All the characters I didn't really like. That's awesome. And, uh, that being said, uh, they, I, I, I like I like Cassie Lang. I think they did a good job with her. Um, and her dynamic with um, our our Scott Lang, their their character dynamic was kind of more of the focus of the movie. Oh, cool. Because he was gone for like five years, and now he's, um, yeah, he, he saved the world. He's Avenger, and now he's just he wrote a book, and now he's just riding off of his fame, and she's mm-hmm. out there like going and and joining protests because she's still trying to fight against injustice, and he's just kind of like, y- don't get yourself in jail. I I've, I've been there, <laughs> so, um. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say this was like a ten out of ten. Oh, Marvel's back, baby, or anything like that. Anybody who's expecting that is going to be woefully disappointed. It's just, it's just a good movie. It's mm. fun. Don't do, think do, too hard about some things. Does it end in a laser light show? Um, a laser light show. It's a simple question. 
like um, big beam struggles and shit and whatever. It's more akin to like, I I mean there are there are beam weapons, but it's not like a the 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 thing is because Ant Man it's just giant giant kaiju sized people. Okay. Okay, that's an answer in and of itself. Hmm. Um. So, yeah. Uh, my brother works at the movie theater uh, now, so he can just hook us up with like tickets nice. and stuff. He works. He works at the bar, and they really like him because he makes he he knows a lot about mixing drinks and stuff. Hmm. So that's that's just nice. Um, and aside from that, I have just been doing a bunch of work. I'm still in the master's program, so, you know, dealing with all that stuff. Hmm. Uh, I don't think I've watched anything that I, I really have to share at this point, so hmm. that's it for me. So, so how's it going? Uh, pretty good. Uh, I played Stray. Finally, the cat game on PS5. Cat game. It's delightful. Uh, the story premise is you're in an underground bunker. You come across this weird fungus stuff uh, that eventually evolves to look like head crabs. Uh, and you later find out that all humans are gone. Robots are pretending to be humans. And the fungus stuff is actually the evolved form of the fungus that we made to eat trash. It has evolved to eat metal, and robots are fucking terrified of it. So, and they can't kill it because they're in an underground city, and its weakness is light. So, you as a cat have to find a way to get out of this sealed-off underground bunker city. Oh. And you just, like, you just run around and jump and parkour your way through an underground city, and it's really fun. I've not known anything about Stray other than it featured a cat, so actually getting to hear about it is actually making me interested. (laughs) It's really, it's really good. There's actually there's an achievement to beat the game in two hours. Like you can speed through this game, but like, don't, because it's really good. Uh, There's a lot of side quests. Uh, Most of the side quests will get you something unique, like you get this harness where you keep your little robot companion. Uh, That's where the vest comes from. Uh, And most of the side quests will get you a little button that you put on the side of it, a little pin. And they're all really cool. Like, there's one that's looks, uh, it's like a neon green cat head that's glow in the dark. So, like, when you go through dark areas, it's the only bright spot on you. It's really cute. Uh, (laughs) If you get all the memory locations, which are Breath of the Wild similar, uh, you get a nice uh, little surprise that I'm not going to spoil. It's really delightful. So, if you have a means to play Stray, I mean, go for it. It's it's surprisingly fun. I didn't assume it was going to be bad or anything, but, like, it's really charming. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've also been playing, uh, replaying, rather, a lot of Elden Ring since the, the DLC came out. Or rather, I guess the free expansion. Like, I didn't download anything, and there's no DLC in the shop or anything. But I've been playing uh, Coliseum and such. I have no interest in that, but I've been meaning to replay the game for a while because I actually never got the basic ending. I never, I never just got like the Elden Lord ending at all. I went, I think I went Ronnie Chaos, uh, and then I think one of the other endings. I don't know, maybe probably Ronnie again. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not? Uh. I was a little disappointed to discover that uh, trophies don't carry over between PS4 and PS5. So, like, I, I didn't, I had most of the trophies on PS4, which is where I originally played it, but they didn't carry over. So I'm back at square one on that front. Darn. Yeah, a little annoying, but it feels satisfying to get those to pop every once in a while. Uh, let's see. Uh, I've been watching Last of Us, the show. That's Super good. I'm blown away by pretty much all of it. Like, the first episode is basically just the first hour of the game. And I mean that in the best possible way. Oh. 
Uh, the second episode diverts a little bit. Tess dies in a slightly different way, but it makes more sense. Uh, Fedra isn't as aggressive. They're still straight up Nazis, but like they're not, they don't chase Joel halfway across the country. It feels like they just, they stop once he leaves the city limits, which makes sense. Uh, let's see. In episode three, they did the Bill and Frank stuff in the little suburb town you go to, which, uh, man, that episode is, I hope that episode wins some of the fucking awards because it's good. It's just how Bill and Frank met and like the the next 30 years of their life together. And it's really good. Because the the way things go down in the video game would not have worked in a show. So like they rewrote it in a way that was respectful to the characters. It made sense. It was entertaining to watch. And it was just good. Hmm. They I mean, even found a way to work <clears throat> in the fact that Frank is still kind of a manipulative piece of shit. Oh. I that, that's good to hear because I, I feel like you you know that's the type of of game that adapts really well to you know being a show. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, they did add they changed the fungus a little bit, so it has like a communication network essentially. So if you step on a vine of fungus somewhere else, anything nearby will be alerted to motion. So they have to watch where they walk carefully. There aren't... Um, That's good, the, I like that. There aren't the fungal zones where the where you have to put on a gas mask. So the reason they made that change is because they didn't want to have, ironically, they didn't want to have the characters wearing masks because it would be hard to, to sell emotion and emoting and stuff like that, which is silly because the main character is the Mandalorian. Yeah. <laughs> I think though, I, I think that's fine because I think the like the vine approach actually adds a, a different element of like danger. Oh, it because, adds tension, all right. I mean, that's the crux of the second episode. With like the classic like zombie stuff, um, it's always like, oh, we can't make a lot of noise, but it's like you can't make noise, and you have to be careful to not touch the wrong thing on top yeah. of that. Especially in areas that are basically overgrown with fungus. You don't know what is a live thread and what's not. Yeah, no, I like that. That 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 that's a good idea. Yeah. So even if you get like just the trial version of HBO Max for a little while, like absolutely check that out when the season's done if you can. Like it's really good. Um Or you can yar har for a bit. Or that. I would honestly recommend that. I cannot support any streaming service at this point. They're all terrible. I'm pretty much just piggybacking off of everyone I know's accounts, so... If it's free, why not? Yeah, basically, yeah. It's it's already on the system down in the living room, so I may as well watch it. So, uh, yeah. Um, uh, girlfriend is trying to find a house in the area. That's been immensely st- uh, stressful, trying to find a house in our price range. Because mm. our price range is pretty much there's going to be something wrong with the house and deciding if this is something we can fix, if it's something that needs to be fixed right away, and is it going to be a money pit? So that's progressing slowly. Mm. Best of luck there. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think it's been a fairly slow week. Hmm. Oh, Resident Evil 4 comes out next month. It does. It has day one DLC. Oh, joy. Uh, yeah, I went from maybe, I went from not knowing that was a thing and like maybe they're working on it to, oh shit, that's it in the store. I'm going to go pre order it. Which normally I'm against pre orders, but I mean, it's, they've nailed it on every remake so far. So I feel like they've built the goodwill. Hmm. And now we move on to the best of the four of us. Oh, that makes me uncomfortable. Wow. <laughs> okay. No, we move on to the last of us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we just finished the last of us. Okay, terrible jokes make me much more comfortable. Okay, let's move on to me, I guess. 
So Hi-Fi Rush is really, really good. I finished it. Nice. It's it's re- really, really good. I am quite good at it. Not exceptional, because I've seen exceptional now, like fucking a video of Big playing it, and it's just, wah. But, uh, yeah, that, that is a really fun game. Um, I... There are two things that I would say that are negatives to the experience. And these are the only two th- negatives that I really have. Like, to okay. make that explicitly clear. One, there is a set of uh, power-ups that you can get. They're collectibles. You know, you get five of them and you get a power-up, which is... Basically, it will refill your health... A certain amount if you run out but you need to charge it up by getting health items while you are full health okay so what that means that. is if you need it you won't have it because you will never be full health to get it charged up and if oh, you do yeah, get okay. it mm. and you can use it you never need to use it because you will be good enough that you don't run out of health Oh, that is an interesting design choice and not the good way of interesting, yeah. I've seen stock up on extra health by getting it when you're full. I've seen that done once before in a game I played, but it was... Sorry. It was when your health drops to zero, all the surplus you picked up gets dropped onto your empty health bar to fill it up again yeah like to be clear this is very much an additive mechanic to how you're actually supposed to play the game you're probably not actually ever going to need it need it in terms of actually playing and finishing the game uh it's maybe a thing for if you're playing on the very 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 hard difficulty but if you're playing again if you're playing that then you are good enough that you're not going to need it and to slightly assuage its pointlessness, it does carry over to between missions. So if you fill it up part way, then you can continue filling it up until it's actually full and you end up using it. So it will eventually get there, but after a long, long time, probably. Mm. So I see. It's it's just a kind of pointless thing. Is is the complaint that I have. Um, the other problem is, uh, you can skip a lot of cutscenes. You can skip the explicit tutorials where it takes you to, like, a stage area and it'll let you, it'll demonstrate for you how to do a thing. But all of the not quite cutscenes, where it's just the dialogue sequence and you're just listening to people talk at you, you can't skip those. And oh, it, uh, all the walking simulator bits. Yeah, a little bit, and uh, they get kind of tiresome, which is unfortunate. It is basically just a thing that you, you're redoing the levels after you finished it, and you're just going for star rankings and such, and you're going through the level, and then you just kind of have to stop playing for a minute or so while it does the dialogue sequence. You're just waiting. Okay. Okay, I've seen the thing I've seen before. Okay, now we can get back to actually playing the game. Kind of thing. It's a little... I I hope they patch it out at some point. That you can just skip that shit. That does sound annoying. Makes me think of my first experience playing Kingdom Hearts 1. I mean, obviously that was a cutscene instead of just dialogue section, but I get what you mean. Yeah. And those are the two things that are bad about it. The two things about the entire game. From gameplay well, to nice. music to story to uh, visuals to customization to uh, the post-game content. Everything else about the game is a 10 out of 10. It's nice that the only things you have gripes about are more tedious than outright bad. One of them is just the thing that doesn't really need to be there, and if it was just removed, then nothing would change. The other one is, hey, this is a little bit annoying. And that's it. Those are the only complaints. 
with such a stellar game, it makes you wonder why it was released so quietly. Because it's a hard game to sell. It's a it's a really, really tough game to advertise because you need to feel it and experience it for yourself to understand why it's excellent. I see. Yeah, I can see that. So, yeah, just release it on Game Pass because they can do that because it's a Microsoft game. They get all the money regardless. Release it on Game Pass and let people play it and let them spread word of mouth so people can say, holy shit, this thing is awesome. And it worked beautifully. Pretty much. So, yeah, that is that is a very, very good game. Mm. I'll have to get that at some point. Yeah, Zom or Hornet, one of the two, recommended it to me independently. So, yeah, it seems like an exceptional game. <sighs> okay. It's a, it's a rhythm game that doesn't need you to be good at rhythm. It just it just incentivizes you to get better at it. Yeah, pretty much. I'm good at rhythm games. I'm not, so I'm curious how well I'll do at it. I haven't played many, but I'm pretty good at rhythm myself. Uh, anything else? Okay, yeah. so... There's a game that came out recently. It's pretty yeah. good. Mm -hmm. It's called Hogwarts Legacy. It is that. People have strong opinions about the existence of the game. Yes. So, to get out front of this, harassing people for playing the game is a really shitty thing to do. Just going to say that out there. That's just that's really shitty. Don't do that. It just makes you look like the bad guy. That said, J.K. Rowling is a shitty person. Kind of just, also true. We can all understand that. She is also a billionaire with a B. She doesn't care if you buy this game anymore. Yeah, she's. It doesn't matter. She could stop getting money from everything HP related and still live the rest of her life just fine. It doesn't matter anymore. She she could stop getting money from everything Harry Potter related, and keep making money regardless because she has that much money. Once you get to a certain point of having enough money, you can't get rid of it. Like, there are examples of billionaires explicitly trying to not be billionaires anymore, and they can't. So. Yeah. So, I don't... From that side of things, I don't particularly believe in the whole, hey, boycott it, especially considering the people that do believe it also kind of don't believe it. Um... There was the thing with the uh, administrator of Reset Era, which is a very, 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 uh, let's call it left-leaning uh, website, where discussion of just about anything that is even the slightest bit contentious is uh, just kind of shut down instantly. Um, that site had a policy of never discussing Hogwarts Legacy because it is a game that comes from the mind of a bigot, even though it isn't. It's completely separate from her. She didn't really work on it. Uh, and then the administrator was caught playing the game. So, yeah. This is why boycotts can't be taken seriously. I want to support boycotts, but like, man... Stick to your word if you're going to say something. The, um, to kind of, uh, I guess have a more balanced approach from people I know, because I, I do have a lot of friends who are, you know, trans and they feel very strongly about this. I have a friend who's, you know, Jewish and feels very strongly about, you know, people using anti Semitism and everything with what's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the, the phrase that often comes up is that, um, J.K. Rowling herself has stated that she views, you know, support of Harry Potter as support of her views, essentially. 
to counter that point directly, because that is something someone else has said to me. <clears throat> so let me get this straight. We are considering J.K. Rowling's views as actually legitimate. Hmm. Please try again. That my phone went off. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, like, J.K. Rowling says a lot of shit. Most of it is very, very stupidly wrong. So why is that quote something we should take seriously? Hmm. So that's my opinion on that particular line. Also, it's but, just, it's stating that she has confirmation bias, that she's linking something unrelated to her own views. Which is not ever going to stop. If it's not this, it's just going to find something else. Yeah. Like, I absolutely get it. I absolutely get not wanting to support someone that is like that. She doesn't need support. She doesn't care about lack of support. It doesn't matter to her anymore. That said, what I think people should do if they feel this strongly about it is donate to causes that directly counter her views donate to the trevor project donate to other trans and lgbt charities that help people that are suffering and struggling buying or not vi buying a video game does not change it doesn't move the needle in the slightest so there's a lot of people who donated to uh one of, there's a lot of trans uh, pro trans organizations that are being uh shown light on so that's cool. Yeah. So that's kind of where I stand on that. I have played the game. It is quite good. It does not solve racism, which is apparently a thing that some outlets have decided is the thing that that game should try to do. I think that's maybe a little bit unfair of an expectation. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Kotaku ran a weird article that kind of got in my head for how weird it was but um, so kotaku did a kotaku then basically yeah so the way that hogwarts legacy approaches these issues that are so very contentious and unfortunately part of the conversation surrounding this game about wizards and magic and shit uh there is a trans character it is not a particularly great representation of a trans character it's not the is, worst that there has ever been, but it is not I was great. about to ask, yeah. There is a weird and kind of uncomfortable, not all blanks uh, kind of approach to um, the conflict with the goblins, which... <sighs> It's very common in stories that deal with uh, racial divides, let's call it. It's technically species for the setting, but you know what it's, it's an analog of. Mm -hmm. um, it's very common to be like, hey, these people are trying to do a violence to make change happen, and that's bad. We need to support the ones that want to do things diplomatically. The irony is... Um, it kind of proves the opposite in this game because the guys that want to do a violence get stopped and then the problem doesn't get solved for at least a hundred years. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, you know, kind of says something itself there, but I don't think that was intentional. Um, but yeah, it... It does... I'm going to say this is completely unconfirmed by me, so I can't really speak to it, but the way I have uh, heard the conflict started uh, in, in the story is... There was a goblin, he was a cool dude watching some wizards do some cool excavation things, and he was really interested and wanted to help. A wizard dropped his wand, the goblin picked it up and tried to hand it back to him. The wizard decided to be a freaking weirdo and beat the shit out of him, basically. So, yeah. That's how that goes. The entire conflict was kind of started with... Uh, I'm blanking on the term because this is a very heavy topic for, like, trying to talk about a video game. And I'm a lot of brain juice going towards it, but... Uh, 
Uh, racial profiling, I guess. Yeah, racial profiling. That's it. Thank you. Sorry, my blank brain completely blanked because I'm trying. Like I say, I have to dance around a lot of very complicated and very loaded topics while talking about a video game about wizards and magic and shit. So, yeah, it is a conflict started by racial profiling. And uh, that's an interesting take. I doubt they do anything interesting with it. I don't think this game solves racism. But I also don't think that's a fair standard to hold it to. I know the person behind the setting and everything has some really shitty views, but that doesn't mean that we need things that come from that setting to be the direct opposite counter to all of the evil that she puts in the world. That is my view on it. Like, these... This is a game made by a lot of people who worked really hard on it and wanted to tell a good story. Didn't really want to be in the middle of a firestorm of race and LGBTQ rights and all of this stuff. But that's where we are on it. So, those are my views on the heavy subjects. Moving on to how the actual game is, because that's the thing. <laughs> it's a video game, guys. It's a fun game. Uh, the castle is well realized. There is a lot of fun and neat magical shit going on pretty much all of the time. It is filled with all kinds of neat little details of little bits of magic going off all over the place. Like uh, mm. the portraits actually do move as you wander around the castle and just sort of have a look around and see what you're doing and stuff like that. The That's pretty cool. Animated knights have this weird but kind of hilarious sequence th that goes by whenever you walk by them. Like, there's just two standing next to each other and you walk by, and one of them is humming to himself. And that's cute. You know, that's cool. So you move on, then you happen to go through the same hallway again, and he's still humming, and the other one just sort of bonks him on the head and, like, stop it. It's like, okay, this is apparently a sequence. And you do it again, and he's still humming, so the other one just sort of starts beating the shit out of him and smashing him to pieces <laughs> until he's just a bunch of scattered pieces of armor and it continues to hum <laughs> on yeah, the floor just does. sort of goes just scattered armor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it it's full of all kinds of neat details uh, like that um, the characters are interesting it's actually a pretty diverse cast they tried on that front there are a lot of Middle Eastern and black and um, Asian characters involved in the cast um, I will say I have not met anyone that is explicitly Jewish but that is harder to tell from a glance yeah. there are no names like Goldstein or anything like that that I have noticed so, I don't know. Um, the combat is kind of awesome. Like, I came to this game directly off of Hi-Fi Rush. So, I came into this game expecting kind of ho-hum combat, especially by comparison. Uh, no. That uh, that combat system is pretty robust. It has the pretty standard things of press Y to block when there's a little thing over your head in yellow. There is press B to dodge when there is a red thing over your head. Um, it's pretty standard stuff, but the spell chaining of like, hey, you can lift someone up in the air and then shoot them a bunch, and then you can cast another spell to drag them towards you and then set them on fire and then throw them away and smash them into pillars and shit. It is really in depth, and you can actually go very in depth into like Devil May Cry style combo shit if you really, really get good at it. Damn, it feels That's pretty great cool. to play. Yeah. Um, the story is not amazing. It's not bad, but it's not amazing. You kill a lot of people. 
<laughs> like, I did not expect that to be a thing in this game, but you fucking murder a lot of people. Uh, um, I have a question, because um, I'm just genuinely curious on this. I've heard that you can get, like, the forbidden curses in this game. Yes. Um, what's the context for that? Uh, there is a student who is a little on the sketch side. Not massively, but a little. And he is willing to teach you the unforgivable curses. Is my understanding so far, I haven't gotten that far in the game yet. Um, oh, I'm curious and- what the game will treat that like you start throwing out killing curses you can do that yes um the way it works is uh you can choose to learn them or not and if you don't learn them it is not a penalty to like completionism or anything like that it is just a thing you chose not to do and that's perfectly fine um but if you do learn them you can use them in combat there is a whole dark arts tree of magic where um you can cast the killing curse it has like a minute and a half cooldown it will instantly kill anything you hit with it and it cannot be blocked but it has a minute and a half cooldown that said there is a curse mechanic where you can get skills that will add curse to your spells so you can hit a bunch of different enemies with these spells they will get cursed and then you cast one killing curse and it will kill every cursed enemy Oh, damn. Okay. In moral terms, in the in the lore of the game, it is worse to cast a Killing Curse or a Crucio, you know, the Torture Curse, because that's what you have to want to do. You can get the same effects from a lot of different combinations, and they can be a lot more gruesome than getting hit by a green light and dying. Um... Like, you can freeze people solid and then cast a cutting curse at them and shatter them into pieces. Oof. You know, fair. (laughs) That's kind of always been the case, but now we get to see it in, like, actual action. Yes. Well, as far as I've known, like, there wasn't... uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but in, in the original series, there wasn't a lot of big, like, elemental magic that would, like, do stuff. Like, I feel like they added a lot of spells here. Uh, they added some, I I mean, a lot of it is very standard stuff, like you get the Exploding Curse, Bombarda, you get, uh, um, the Levitation, Pull, Push, you get, uh, Fire, Spell, Incendio, you get, uh, the Freezing one that I forget the name of, um, Mm -hmm. and the Cutting Curse, and, yeah, it's it's all fairly standard stuff for the most part. Um, Okay. Uh, Transfiguration, you can... <laughs> there is a perk you can get where you can add the Transfiguration curse. Uh, well, it's not a curse, it's just a spell. But um, you can add to it so that every time you cast Transfiguration, you turn the person into a bomb that you can then throw oh. at their friends. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Surprisingly okay. dark video game. <laughs> yeah! Like, I... When I started seeing, like, compilations of people doing this weird, like, crazy Devil May Cry shit with spellcasting, I had to double-check the rating for the game. Like, is this an M? Because this feels like a fucking M. (laughs) I'm surprised it's not, actually. Mm. Is it just, like, not gory and that's why it kept out of that range? Yeah, pretty much. It's just not gory. But, uh, yeah. So you're enjoying it, then? I'm enjoying it a lot. Um... I just unlocked the Room of Requirement, which is your personal, like, home base kind of thing where you can do the crafting stuff, like potions and herbology and growing plants and stuff, so you can, you know, that sort of thing. And it is a weirdly in-depth customization thing where you can uh, edit the entire decor of the place, like the walls and ceiling and floor and everything add all kinds of decorations and things like that and I'm like oh this is pretty cool um I kind of wish I could change it from being quite so bright though and then it says like hey you can change the ambiance would you like it to look like it's in moonlight all of the time and it does it and I'm like 
oh wow, I need to make this place look fucking awesome because this is, this is so fucking cool. So I'm probably going to spend a few hours just making that look really fucking cool. No, oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just recently unlocked flying on a broom, which, you know, it is what it is. It feels decent. It feels good enough. Um, there are a bunch of mini games and collectibles and such and all kinds of things like that. There is a lot of detail and a lot of open world stuff in this game that does not feel as shit as most Ubisoft games that it's aping. Like, mm. there is a lot of charm to it. And, pardon the pun. Uh, so, yeah, I very much recommend getting the game. If you absolutely must, then sail the seas to enjoy it if you feel like that's the way you want to do things. I don't, you know, uh, or if you want to buy it used, fine. But it is a game I very much recommend playing regardless of whether you pay full price for it or just get a second hand or whatever else, I still kind of recommend donating to the Trevor Project and other charities of the same vein. I don't know if there are any uh, Jewish-specific charities. I assume there are, but they don't get I as much I attention. Really... But I feel yeah, like... I was about to say, I haven't heard of any, just, uh, yeah. just trans ones. Yeah, but... I would have to look into that and donate to those as well because that seems like a reasonable thing to do if you really feel strongly enough to harass someone for playing a video game. Like, do something positive, not negative. That's the way that should work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I never approve of any harassment towards individuals um, just because you just putting more negative stuff out there you know yeah. like it like i said uh, it just makes you look like the bad guy you know and uh i'm i'm not gonna play this game that's fair. um that's that's my own decision you know if you want to play the game that's fine i don't have any nostalgia for this franchise i read it in high school um because mom would not let me play <laughs> read, read the books or anything that's fair. Um, funny thing though i don't either I didn't read the books. I didn't watch the films. I tell a lie. I think I watched the film. I definitely watched the fifth one. I don't know about the other ones, but like, yeah, my exposure to Harry Potter was through fan fiction almost entirely. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, putting all that aside, it was just—it's just a fun game that is enjoyable to play. But uh, yeah. yeah, sorry. Yes, you didn't want to play it, and that's perfectly fine. Yeah. If it's not acceptable and... to you, if it's if it's not acceptable to people to enjoy something based on these circumstances, I totally get it. Just yeah, my, my only real problem. I keep cutting you off. I'm sorry. Um, my only real problem is when you bring that down on other people. That's not okay. That's yeah. That's the collective you. And you know, likewise, the reverse is is not okay you know when th there's um people who um harass those who are not bothering anybody and just don't want to play the game yeah that's uh -huh. also not okay like agreed it's... let people make their own choice yeah it's just a fucking video game guys if people want to play it or not play it that's entirely their business so yeah <sighs> that sounds like the sigh of an end of a podcast. That was the sigh of being exhausted <laughs> from. The... <sighs> yeah. A talk that should not have been that complicated. Yeah. But uh, that's how it goes. Modern discourse. Uh, yeah. I really fell off Harry Potter when freaking Rowling just started going nuts on Twitter and was like, oh, they vanished their poop. Yeah. <laughs> and just. Yeah, there was. There was a lot of issues before all of the episode. Yeah, b before <laughs> everything was started coming out, just I, I was just like, you know what? I, I I'm fine going and, and focusing on other series. Is, She's just gonna retcon everything, anyways. Is Dobby's massive penis canon? 
I cannot remember. I don't know. Um, I was going to say that sounds like something you saw in porn and were like, yeah, that's a, mm. but no, she might have talked about that. And I, I honestly couldn't say one way or the other definitively. That's how that went. People have made so many memes about it. I don't know if she talked about it or not. It feels like something she would have, but I don't know. Mm. Uh, well. So that's a podcast. The... <laughs> I have one last thing I want to say. Okay. Um, there's a Zelda trailer during the N- Nintendo Direct. They're not telling us anything. Keep it that way. <laughs> don't tell me stuff. I, Sometimes I the best experience is to go in as blind as possible. Yes. Zero, I appreciate yeah. your restraint in not talking <laughs> for 90 minutes about the Zelda trailer, because I know you could have, but you didn't. I appreciate I could, that. I could have, and I analyzed every frame of it, but okay. I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm not going to. Don't tell me anymore. Stop. Like, don't don't show anymore. They, they have been avoiding story like the plague mm-hmm. and only showing off mechanics. They showed, like, Ganondorf talking. Mm. That was the only story thing, and it's probably Matt Mercer. So, yeah. I mean, big scary Sorry. voice. He is very good at those. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, excited um, about that. We need to do Patreon. Yeah, we need to do Patreon. Um, I am loading it up right now. Yeah. So... Body boop boop boop. Um, I want to say to thank you to our patrons. Uh, thank you to. Oh, they changed this layout again. They did, didn't they? Probably. Oh, okay. This is. Um, I always don't like this. <laughs> Um, thank you to, uh, Boy by Fresh for your, your donation. Uh, I can't see the amount anymore. <laughs> so, that's so stupid. All right. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, so, what, whatever. Um, thank you for the amount of money you have given <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah, no, this is so. Thank you, Patreon, for always always changing. Um, and I don't know why. Uh, give me a second here to actually figure this out. Go for it. Just kind of vamp for a bit. I'm gonna. Gotta love it when things update. It's oh, great. Yeah. It's good stuff. Just let it always own. getting better. Speaking of, I did. I actually forgot to mention I got a new phone recently because mine was. Uh, did I describe that I had to hit my phone to get it to work? Uh, no, maybe I don't know. I don't remember. Then my uh, my screen was dying, and it's a model problem where the screen pops out of place, and you have to basically hit it back into place. Uh, anyway, it, it failed and died. So uh, I got a new phone. And uh, now when I open links in Discord, it always prompts me to open the Samsung this uh, internet instead of Chrome. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to fix it. It's like, I don't want to use fucking Samsung internet. I already use Chrome. It's fine. Just let me let me use Chrome. Okay. I got it. Okay. I have to click on each person now. Yeah. I have and, then, I, like that. And, and I had to filter out the um, some people who were not... <laughs> Okay, okay. I think I got it though. Okay. I think so. We just make sure we have all of this. Okay. So thank you to uh, sorry Troper uh, for your ten dollar donation. Thank you to Troper thirty seven. Uh, thank you to the Crossbrain for your ten dollar donation. Um, thank you to Ethan F for your ten dollar donation. Thank you to Greek Guy for your um, $1.24. <laughs> Thank you to uh, Vale for your $10 donation. Thank you to Stiller of House Thunderbird for your $1 donation. Thank you to Ryu, uh, HitCF21 for your $5 donation. And thank you to um, Train Conductors Assemble, I suppose, for your $1 donation. 
I think that one's a new one. Yeah. Uh, unless someone just changed their name. Unless I mean, somebody just changed their name, which they might have done. I mean, my dad was a big fan of miniature trains. Like, you know, more power to you. All right, so there we go. I think that is it. <laughs> Sorry. Did... So join us next week where we spend about an hour talking about the reveals at the Pokemon Directs. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a good they're time. going. To, they're going to show the new evolu- evolution of Eevee, and it's going to be a rock. And it's going Rocky to be really, really cute, probably. <laughs> it's, it's stony on. Obsidian, of course. Oh, there we oh, go. That's, that's, that's good. good. That's I was good. I was just going to say rock on, and, you know, obsidian is way better. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, oh, for listening. Uh, uh, link Discord and Patreon in the description if you feel like it, you know. It's yeah, cool. Join us yeah. on the Patreon. It's fun. Or uh, the Discord, sorry. Yes. Join us in our Discord. Its link is down below. Hmm. There's all sorts of wacky people in there. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. See you. Bye. Bye.